This is the third tutorial video for Edexcel P3. Today we will be looking at different lenses. So we'll be looking at converging lenses and diverging lenses as well as where the image is formed and the focus point is. We will also look at how to calculate the position of the focal length from the object distance and the image distance. In this tutorial we will be looking at the power of a lens in regards to its shape. We will be having a look at how we can calculate the power of a lens in the units of diopters and we will be using something called the lens equation. Whenever we are looking at lenses, we are looking at refraction. Refraction will be looked at more in videos 4 and 5 in this series. However, from P1 and P2, you should be aware that when light enters a more dense medium, it slows down. It also will bend towards the normal. You should also be aware that glass is more dense than air. However, glass is less dense than water. We can also link this idea to prisms, where they will split white light, which will happen because violet light is refracted more than red light, thereby giving us our spectrum that appears through the prism. For P3, we need to be aware of two broad types of lenses. The first of these is the converging lens, and the second is our diverging lens. The converging lens will focus the light beyond the lens to a focal point, whereas in the diverging lens, the light is bent outwards with the focus point and hence the image being formed in front of the lens. As we can see the converging lens is fattest in the middle of the lens and thinnest at the outside. Whereas the diverging lens is thinnest in the middle and much much fatter at the outskirts. However for both lenses the thicker they are, the more powerful they are, and hence more refraction will take place. It is important to note that both of these lenses can be drawn in a slightly different way. By drawing them as lines, this will enable us to draw lens diagrams. As we can see, for a converging convex lens, we draw a solitary straight line with arrows pointing outwards, whereas for our diverging concave lens, we again draw a solitary straight line, this time with the arrows pointing inwards. Before we look at lens diagrams, it's important to be aware of the terms diopters. Diopters are a way of measuring the power of the lens. This is calculated by doing 1 over the focal length in meters. This will work for both converging and diverging lenses. If a converging lens is used, the power in diopters will be positive. For a diverging lens, it will be a negative value. Lenses which have much larger curvature, and hence are thicker, will be stronger than lenses which are much, much smaller. However, it is possible to make strong glasses, but with less curvature and to make them thinner. In order to do so, we need to adjust the focal length of the lens. In the exam paper, 
they can often ask you to work out the power of a lens from its focal length. So if we were to take question one, where we are given a focal length of 0 0.1 meters. Because the focal length is already in meters, we do not need to convert it. Instead, we simply need to do 1 divided by 0 0.1 meters. When we do this, we will end up with a power in diopters of 10 diopters. I now want you to pause the video and calculate the answers to the remaining four questions. Remember to convert your focal length into meters. You should have got five diopters for the second one converting 20 centimeters to 0 0.2 meters. 20 diopters for the third one, again making sure we convert centimetres, conversion of millimetres into metres and an answer of 250D, and then finally a conversion of kilometres into metres, giving us 0.05D. It is important to be able to draw a ray diagram for specific lenses. The first one we will look at is for the converging lens. As we can see from the diagram for the converging lens, the light approaches the lens, is refracted, and then is focused at point F. This means that the rays of lights are refracted inwards. The image they formed is real. In other words, this is an image that can be projected onto a screen. Our second ray diagram is for our diverging lens. This time the rays of light are refracted outwards, however we get a partial reflection of the light. This leads to the light being focused at point F, this time before the lens. This means that a virtual image is formed. In other words, the image doesn't actually exist and as such cannot be placed onto a screen. As if you were to try to put this onto a screen, the screen would block the light rays from reaching the lens and hence the image could not be formed. In order to use our lenses to draw a full ray diagram, we need to follow two rules. The first of which is that we draw a ray from the top of the object parallel to the axes to the middle of the lens and then down through the focal length. We then draw a ray from the top of the object going through the center of the lens on the axes and then straight through. Where these two points meet will be the top of the image. In the example here, the image is real in that it can be projected onto a screen as it is focused on the right hand side of the lens. It is upside down and it is much smaller than the original object. The distance that the object is away from the lens will affect the position, size and orientation of the image. First, if the object is at 2f, this means it is twice the focal length of the lens away from the lens. Then we will draw in our parallel line and then refract through F, as well as our straight line through the center of the axes. This means that the image is formed at 2F away from the lens, is inverted, so it is upside down, however it is the same size. If we move our object closer, this time between 2F 
and f away, so it is between 1 and 2 times the focal length away. The image is formed further away than 2f and is inverted and this time magnified. We can see our straight line that has been refracted down through f as well as our second straight line which has gone undeviated through the center of the axes. If we continue to move our object closer, this time at f, then the first line will refract down through f, the second line as before has gone undeviated through the axes. This time the image will be formed at infinity as in the rays will never meet, they will end up being parallel to each other and we can use this setup for searchlights as we are magnifying the area between the two light rays. Finally, if we move the object closer again, this time at a distance shorter than the focal length, so between f and the lens, then the virtual image is going to be formed on the same side. Once more, we draw a straight line across to our lens and then refract through F and our second line, which will run straight through the axes. This time, the two light rays will diverge from each other However, some of the light is reflected off of the lens. We get a partial reflection, causing the light rays to bounce back. Where these two light rays meet will be the location of the image. We can see that the image is formed on the same side of the lens as the object. This time is the right way up, so it is no longer inverted and is magnified. This will be a virtual image as it is not projected onto a screen. As we stated previously, if we were to put a screen in, then the light rays would not be able to come from the object. All of these lens diagrams can be used to verify the lens equation. The lens equation is an equation that you are given on the front of your P3 paper and looks as below. It reads that 1 over F equals 1 over U plus 1 over V. In order to answer questions using the lens equation, we need to know what F, U and V stand for. Of these, F is the easiest one to remember. This is the focal length of the lens, so we have 1 over the focal length. Both U and V are slightly more annoying to remember as they are not letters found in the words themselves. U relates to the object distance. This is the distance between the object and the lens, whereas V refers to the image distance, which again is the distance between the image and the lens. If the image distance is positive, then we are looking at a real image, whereas if a negative sign is used, then the image formed is virtual. An example exam question can be seen below. So a torch is placed 40 centimeters away from a lens with a focal length of 10 centimeters. Where will the image form? In order to work out the answer to this question, we must first work out what the question is asking us. So from the question, we are told that the torch is placed 40 centimetres away from a lens. Because this is placed away from the lens, this is going to be looking at either the object or the image. Later on in the question, it tells us that we're looking for where the image formed. Therefore, this must 
be equal to the object length or u. Second thing in the question tells us the focal length is 10 centimeters. As such, we now know that 10 must equal f. So now we have the first parts of our question. We do, however, need to make 1 over v the subject of our equation. In order to do this, we must rearrange the equation and therefore make 1 over v equals 1 over f minus 1 over u. This has been done by taking 1 over u away from both sides. If we now plug in our numbers, this gives us our 1 divided by 10, which is equal to 0 0.1. Take 1 divided by 40, which is equal to 0 0.025, giving us an answer of 0 0.075. A common exam mistake is to leave the answer at this stage. However, what we need to do is work out what v is. At the moment, we have worked out what 1 over v is. In order to do this, we must do 1 divided by 0.075 which will give us our final answer of 13.33 centimetres away. Make sure that in the exam you remember that this first answer is equal to 1 over v. In order to cancel it out, we must then do 1 over whatever the answer in part 1 was. Also remember that your answer to a lens question using the lens equation can be a negative answer. If your answer is negative, then this means that the image formed is virtual. In the next video, we will look further at lenses, examining refraction and reflection in more detail. We will then move on to having a look at total internal reflection as well as the critical angle.